إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنَ إِذَا كَانَ بِانْقِطَاعٍ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا The believing person, when he is about to depart from this world, to be detached from the world, وَإِقْبَالٍ مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ And he is almost about to go into the hereafter. نَزَلَ إِلَيْهِ مَلَكَانِ بِيضُ الْوُجُوهِ كَأَنَّ وُجُوهَهُمُ الشَّمْسِ Two beautiful angels will come down from the sky. They have got beautiful faces full of light, as if their face is the sun itself. That's how much light they have. وَمَعَهُمْ حَنُوطٌ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَكْفَانُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ They have perfume from paradise. And they have shrouding, a shroud from paradise. Now to say the rest in English, inshallah, to buy ourselves time. And then they wrap him. And they place the perfume in him. And the angel of death is there. And he says to the soul of the believer, come out, come out to a pleasure from your Lord. Come out, come out to a, to a luxury that you are going to receive from your Lord. Ayyatuha ruh al-tayyibah. O beautiful, pure soul. The Prophet ﷺ said, the soul of the believer comes out, or the angel of death takes it out in this way. Just like water spilling from a jug. Can you imagine water spilling from a jug? How does it spill out? You can see it. Spills out softly, smoothly, purely, beautifully. There are no obstacles in coming out. Kafiyya siqa. Or the, or I don't know if you have it, I mean, Lebanese have this, and I think Turkish people have this. They drink with it like this, up, and then the water sort of comes out of the nozzle. Have you ever seen that? It's got a nozzle that comes out. It comes out beautifully, huh? It's water coming out like a fountain. So it says the soul comes out as smoothly as that. What a description. And the two angels, they don't allow the angel of death to hold it for long at all. For as soon as they can, they take the soul off him and they place it in this beautiful shrouding and perfume from Jannah. And they climb up with it into the heavens. And every angel that it passes by, because there are angels everywhere, on earth, in between the skies, as you're going, at the first level, everywhere. Angels are, are uncountable. And each time it passes an angel, or a group of angels, they say, من هذه الروح الطيبة? Whose beautiful soul is this? And the angels who are carrying it will say, فلان ابن فلان, so and so son of so and so. بأحسن الأسماء الذي كانوا يسمونه بها, with the best names that he was ever called with on this earth. And they will welcome it until it reaches the first heavens or the first sky. And it has the first skies of gates. Only Allah knows how these gates are and what their nature is. But there are gates. How much do we know of the universe and the black hole and the stars? We hardly know anything. What's up there? The خَلْقُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ خَلْقِ النَّاسِ Allah says the creation of the universe and the earth is, is much bigger. Bigger and more phenomenal than the creation of the human body. The angels, there are angels at the gates of the first sky. And they say, who is this soul for, this beautiful soul? And they call it by its beautiful names. And they ask for the gates to be opened for it. And the gates will be opened. And then it reaches the second. And every time it passes by, by a, a group of angels, they'll say the same thing and welcoming it. Well, imagine that, Ya Akhwan. You've just now departed from the world and there is a welcoming from a creation made of light. There is no darkness in there. There is no hatred. You are the famous one. You are popular among these enormous creatures, beautiful creatures you've never had eyes laid on. And no one else can see this. And if we hadn't been told by Allah and His Messenger, we wouldn't have known this reality. We only say what Allah and His Messenger tell us. For we believe in what they tell us of the unseen. It says it reaches a point very high. In some hadiths it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, take this soul so it can see its kingdom and its property in heaven. And then by the time the body is prepared for burial, the soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders them to return the soul back. This is in the hadith of the Prophet so I'm continuing. He says, take it back. From the soil we created the body and to them. And to it we will return them, and from it we will resurrect them once again. Return the soul back to the body. It's going to be questioned in the grave. And they return it into the body. Prophet ﷺ said, Then two angels will come to him. Munkar wa nakir. Munkar wa nakir. It is an Arabic terminology of creatures that are unknown, unidentified, unknown. Munkar, meaning don't know what it is. Nakir, even more unknown. Munkar Nakir, one that has never been thought of or imagined. Nakir, another one that has never been known or identified. They're just different expressions the Prophet ﷺ gave. Munkar wa Nakir. You cannot tell what they are. You can't 
the images is, is horrific. It's unbearable. And you, don't, you can't say what they are. You just say they're creatures of some sort. Some of them will see them, see them monstrous, monsters. They are quite horrific, Munkar Wanakir. They look the same for the believer and the disbeliever. But the difference is, for the believer, Allah says in the Qur'an, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens and makes firm those of you who believe in Allah. Makes you firm in this life, in your iman, and will make you firm in the hereafter. Meaning in your grave and in the day of judgment. You will not be afraid. So the angels will come and they will wake him up and say, Mar Rabbuk. They'll ask him three questions. Mar Rabbuk. Who is your Lord? Wa ma dinuk. What is your religion? Wa ma da taqulu rajul ladhi bu'itha fikum. And what do you say about that man who was sent as a messenger among you? In another hadith, you probably hear about wa ma kitabuk. What is your book? And he will say, my Lord is Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believed in him and worshipped him. My religion is Islam and, my, and the man is my prophet. I heard about him and I believed in him and followed him. And the angels will say to him, sleep or rest. Rest for what is going to come is going to be better. O beautiful soul. And then he is told to look or she is told to look to their left. And a little opening, a gateway is opened. And they see hellfire burning itself. Terrible, terrible place. And they will say to him, I don't know if it's Munkar Wanakir or others, other angels that will be there. They will say to him, nevertheless, look at that. And the person in the grave moves away. Says, that is your place. That is your place. And Allah created that place for you. But because you chose to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have saved yourself from that place. You will never go in there. And they close it. See, Rasulullah told us that every person has a place in heaven or hell. And whichever one you hold on to is the one you earn. Then they open a door from the right. And he sees paradise, palaces, beauty, no undescribable beauty. And he loves it. And they say to him, this is what is awaiting for you now. You have earned it and you are going there. This is your kingdom. But as soon as he sees that, the Prophet says, the person in the grave, says dua makes a dua says allahumma rabbi aqim as-sa'ah ya rabbi aqim as-sa'ah oh my lord let the world end let the world end hatta adhaba ila ahli wa mali so i may go to my family and belongings in paradise i want to go there please end it quickly he wants the world to erupt so he can go there because of what he has seen in another hadith also sahih where as they are in the grave their grave opens up as far as they could see. And it is filled with a garden from the gardens of paradise. As the Prophet ﷺ told us, As the poet says, based on the hadith, and then he said, It is either a garden from the gardens of paradise or a pit from the pits of hellfire. And a person comes to him and sits with the person in the grave. His face is full of companionship and, and lovely company. And you say to that person, who are you? For your face is the face that brings khayr. This is also in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Sahih. فَوَجْهُكَ الَّذِي يَجِئُ بِالْخَيْرِ Your face brings good fortune. It brings good news. You know, when someone comes to you with a smiley face and you say, wow, you know, my, my heart opened up. I love your company. You only say good things. You compliment me. You give me good news. Contrast that to a person who comes with a miserable face and you know that he's got bad news for you. This person comes to you with good news. And you say, وَجْهُكَ الَّذِي يَجِئُ بِالْخَيْرِ Your face is the face that brings only good news. And the person says to him, أَنَا عَمَلُكَ الصَّالِحِ I am your good actions, your righteous actions. Look, you've turned me into this beautiful company for you. And he says, أَنَا لَا أُفَارِقُكَ أَبَدًا I will never depart from you, I'll keep you company here. So you don't be lonely. In the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu he says that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, one of the moments that he will be closest to his servant is when they are in the grave with no anis or jalis with no companion of their family from this life, he will be very close to them to look after them. So when a person dies or passes away in your family or someone friendly to you, always remember that no one, a stranger has not captured him, he's not imprisoned, he's not kidnapped, but he is taken away by the most merciful Allah who created you and them. So he's in good hands. Inshallah.